Rockin' the house right here on Bronx Nets, Channel 67. DJ Ku Clyde on the ones and twos, doing Dancing Machine with the Jackson 5. Michael Jackson, we celebrate his birthday today. He would have been 53 years old. Welcome back, everybody, to Open. I'm your host, Dr. Bob Lee, and our first guest is gearing up for the first annual Labor Day Marathon taking place right here in the Boogie Down BX. Please welcome race director Mike Oliva. We welcome you to the show. Thank you for having me, Bob. Now, you've been doing these on the holidays. How many holidays have you done so far? This will be our uh, ninth major holiday we've had a race. We started last Thanksgiving was our, our first holiday race in Van yeah. Cortland Park. Why holidays? Um, you know, we, we saw a need for um, people to get out and have some community spirit on mm -hmm. holidays. Uh, so a friend and I, a friend Michael Arnstein and I, decided a few days before last Thanksgiving to just put on a, a community event, you know, invite a lot of people out to Van Cortland Park to get together yeah. on a holiday. And in the mornings, you know, and people could still spend time with their families, but why not bring the community together in the mornings uh, on major holidays? You know how big this can get, right? Yeah, we have an idea. <laughs> we were pretty shocked at how popular how much it took off and how popular it's gotten already. Yeah. But you're right, the sky's the limit with how much bigger it could get from here. Uh, I'll tell you why. There was a, a Bronx, uh, um, a Manhattan Borough president once upon a time. Uh, he ran a company called Inner City Broadcasting Corporation. He was a chairman. And there was a race that ran throughout Central Park. He enabled that race to run outside of Central Park throughout the five boroughs. Percy Ellis Sutton helped start the New York City Marathon. So, you know, it starts from somewhere. I'm thinking that your race can be uh, pretty big. You know, you're, it's funny. I know a little bit of the history, and Percy Hutton, uh, Percy Sutton was a huge, uh, huge part in bringing together New York City Marathon. Yes. And uh, there's a lot of parallels between mm -hmm. the two races. Yeah, we, we both started inside a park, and the original one in Central Park. I think everyone paid a dollar yeah. um, for the original race. Wow. You know, and our hours are free. So, so how important is it to bring the community together? Because this is one of your ideas to bring the community together and um, talk about health and. Mm -hmm. All of those wonderful, yeah, I mean, in, in this day and age, I think we, we've lost a bit of the community spirit, you know, with technology mm -hmm. and the internet, um, people working long hours, you know, people just don't get together as often. Yeah. Um, and, and local events, you know, they're not a thing of the past, but they're, you know, they're not as common as they used to be. Yeah. Um, so our, our idea was, you know, make this a local event, really bring out the people from the Bronx. Of course, invite people from other boroughs and whoever wants to come. We've, we have people come from Baltimore and people come yeah. from across the country now. But oh, you get people who want to race. They, they'll yeah, come from anywhere. They'll come from, they'll from, come from across the country. <laughs> but our, our yeah. hope and, and our, the world. our idea was to really bring the community together. And that's why we, we had it inside of mm -hmm. Van Cortland Park. And we really yeah. love the yeah, park yeah. in the Bronx. That's great, that's great. So um, you, you chose the holidays because? We chose the holidays because there was a need. Um, any, any weekend you look at a race calendar, a running race calendar, and you'll see plenty of races going on. Yeah. But it, on most of the major holidays, um, you know, there's not a lot going on. Yeah. Um, and there's not a lot free going on that's now, local. Now for these holidays, do they wear costumes? Like sometimes in New York City <laughs> Marathon, you see people SpongeBob and all of these. Yeah, be, outfits on. because our races are on holidays, a lot of people will wear, uh, yeah. you know, uh, Santa Claus outfits. Uh, I don't think we had anyone dressed up as a turkey, <laughs> but we had Easter bunnies, and we yeah. give away some. I'm sure there's plenty of turkeys running also. <laughs> there are turkeys that weren't dressed like that, but uh, we have a lot. Of, we give away a lot of prizes, so yeah. we gave away Santa hats good, on good, Christmas good. and uh, bunny ears on Easter. Uh -huh. So it's real festive, and you know, it takes the pressure off of running yeah. too. What do you say to the person who wants to start running? Thought about running? watches all the races and very enthusiastic about getting involved in it but they don't do it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that's th those are the type of people we're actually trying to encourage to these events mm -hmm. we didn't create these events just for runners you know this is about health and wellness and helping uh, people to lead healthier and active more active lifestyles so we really are encouraging new people to come to the sport and come into the park and i'd say you know you don't have to run to do one of our events you know it's a, we created a beautiful six and a half mile loop through the woods of Van Cortland Park. A oh, lot of beautiful. it's undiscovered. And a lot of people come out just to hike or walk it. They don't even run, but they, they're still part of the festive yeah. atmosphere. Um, they still you know, meet a lot of different people and have fun during the day. So I say a good, a good way to get into running is to walk, you yeah. know, just to hike and get your muscles used to it. some trail mix and do a nature walk. Exactly. Ah. And we give away <laughs> free fruit. You know, we're really promoting yeah. health. So we give away watermelon, oranges, mm -hmm. um, bananas at the start, you know, and it's all free um, yeah. for the community. So, so somebody who wants to first start, or maybe they ran in the past for a long time, you know, a while ago, uh, but they want to get back into it. 
Mm -hmm. What do they do? What do they do? I'd say, you know, a lot of people are into gyms these days. I'd say, you know, a lot of people, weight training is really good, but I'd say get on the treadmill, spend 10 or 20 minutes on the treadmill. Start small. You know, start with a mm. light walk. You know, and then when, when you're starting to see that walking's boring, maybe yeah. ramp, ramp up the speed a little bit and, and jog for 10 or 20 minutes. Of and course you're going to feel that. Yes, you're going to hurt a little <laughs> bit for a couple of days, but don't stop because yeah. a lot of people say, oh, this hurts, and, you know, they stop. The but. key is not to overdo it. A lot of people, they're gung-ho, and they want to get into it right away. Right so away. they go out and they go hard for an hour, and it kills yeah. them. You know, it wears out their muscles, and they're, um, and they're tired. But the key is to start slow. Or you get slow. hurt. Yeah, or you get hurt even worse. The key mm -hmm. is to start slow. Yeah. You know, and even go discover a neighborhood park. New York City has, you know, amazing parks that are mostly underutilized. Uh -huh. So get out there, go for a walk in the park is a good way to start. There you go. All right, you got the big uh, Labor Day 10K and a half marathon. Tell us about that. Yeah, we created a, a six and a half mile loop in Van Cortlandt Park. Um, and people could choose to do how many, how many ever loops they want. One loop is six and a half miles. Two loops is a half marathon. Four is a full marathon. And we also created a loop for beginners, too, because yeah. we realized 6.5 miles is a difficult starting point for a lot of people. So we allow people to run around the parade grounds, which is a flat loop. That's a baby run. I guess it's a baby <laughs> run. Not, not for everybody, but uh, yeah. it's flat, it's simple. Um, uh -huh. There's a lot of people around. So that, that's a 1.7-mile loop, and you can do it twice to yeah. make close to a 5K run for, for the beginners. Yeah, and that's then, a good way to start. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what about eating? What do you recommend? Um, I mean, you talk, they talk about the big marathons, everybody's filling up with pasta and everything <laughs> before the race. Yeah, pre-race, pre my, my advice would be, you know, don't stray from what you normally do. You yeah. know, I'm, I'm, I've been a runner for a little while. I do a lot of endurance events, long distance events, and uh -huh. what works for me is just not changing things up. Yeah. You know, if I eat a bagel and avocado in the morning um, every day, then on race morning, that's, that's what I should eat. You're good. Yeah, and then, yeah. so I, my advice to people would be just to eat what you normally do, don't make a lot of drastic changes. Right. Um, and, and during the race, during the race is a different story. It, it can be tricky, during long races you uh -huh. do need to get calories. But I'd say bananas are always a good safe bet during races. So what do I wear? Do I wear shoes, jeans, or <laughs> what, do I, what do I need? We do have people show up in jeans, they're beginners. <laughs> um, <laughs> jeans aren't my recommended uh, attire for these races, but uh, I'd, I'd say... Baggy pants, tight pants? You, you know, a lot of different types of attire work, work for running. You know, I would just say stay away from the jeans. jeans. Sweatpants work. No. You know, technical fabrics, shorts work. Um, stay away from cotton t-shirts, too, because mm -hmm. once a cotton t-shirt gets wet, it could rub, and then you get chafing and all types of yeah. issues. What about that? I mean, I, you know, I, I cover the New York City Marathon a lot, and I see people with Band-Aids on their nipples and using <laughs> grease and, you know, Vaseline and stuff like that. Yeah. Why is that? Yeah, there, when you run, you do a lot of uh, constant, constant similar motions, and um, there's a lot of rubbing, a lot of constant rubbing, and that creates chafing, which is like, it's like a rug burn, I guess you could say, in different oh, parts wow. of the body. It's pretty painful, and sometimes you'll get that in your nipples, sometimes you'll get it in, your, in the inside of your arms. So and those they, sensitive parts. Very sensitive yes. parts, and the key, Band-Aids uh, prevent that rubbing, and uh, Vaseline uh, also prevents that rubbing, and it, yeah. it, it'll it'll keep you away from that unpleasant situation. So yeah, I definitely recommend using a lot of Vaseline and, and Band-Aids where needed. <laughs> what about socks? Two pair of socks? On no, I like, to, I like to stick with one pair of socks, make a technical fabric, not, no cotton socks. No cotton uh, socks. Co the what? problem with cotton is it absorbs water, um, and, and water creates chafing and it creates blisters. You want a technical pair of socks that wicks away the moisture, yeah. so the moisture gets out there into the atmosphere and yeah. uh, doesn't stay uh, against your body. Right. Well, Mike, tell us about the new, um, you know, people running barefoot now. <laughs> <laughs> sort of, kind of. Yeah, no, they are. I mean, yeah. it, it, it's become a modern phenomenon. You know, a gentleman wrote a book, Chris McDougall wrote Born to Run, where he talks uh -huh. about a, uh, an Indian tribe in Mexico who, uh, who basically, they make tires out of shoes, but they're very minimalist in, yeah. in their running. They make, they make a, they use a very thin piece of tire and uh, and that's what they wear on the bottom of their feet. Or they have feet. leather feet. <laughs> yeah, or they have tough feet. Some of them, not yeah. all of them even run barefoot, but it's become a phenomenon, and you see people in midtown Manhattan on yeah. the streets I've running seen barefoot it a now. Times. Yeah, yeah it's, it's incredible. I wouldn't advise against it. And not New York City, maybe. Uh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's too much glass, and just there, there's a lot of places to get in yeah. trouble. I, yeah. I recommend a little bit of footwear. Now, that's just that, I don't know how tough uh, that, that shoe is or whatever you put on your foot to run barefoot. It's yeah. not really barefoot. It's a, well, you well, put some people, something on. Some people actually are running barefoot, but yeah, they have something called the, the Vibram Five Fingers. Yeah. It's basically like a, a, a heavy sock 
with a rubber bottom yeah. um, that people are wearing on their feet. And at least that protects you from the glasses. So the so. idea is it's lighter and you can go a longer distance. What's, what's the idea? The idea is it's lighter and it's a more natural uh, foot movement. You mm -hmm. know, the, the theory goes we weren't born with shoes. Yeah. Um, so, it, you know, our, our feet are meant to be, be run with barefoot. And, uh, you know, we're trying to get back to that more. Yeah natural environment, but right. people forget we've worn shoes all our lives, so our bodies have adapted to shoes. Right. Here's a term. What do you do when you hit the brick wall? <laughs> you're, you're talking about the, the wall you hit, the mental wall you hit in an yes. endurance run. I can't run. do no more. Oh, I got to <laughs> give up. Yeah, there's a, there's a point where you really feel like you can't go another step yeah. during marathons or long distance races. Yeah. Usually in a marathon, I'd say it's a, anywhere from miles 18 to 20. Yeah. And you, you just mentally are shot. You don't want to do anything. The key is just to not to think about it, just to keep going. Yeah. You know, the more experience you have, you, the better, because it's not a gradual descent into just this, this horrible feeling of the abyss. Yeah. You know, it, you will come back and you will bounce back. Right. You know, the body could actually recuperate and get better as it's working. Right. So the key is just to get through it. It usually lasts, you know, a marathon, it could last anywhere from 10 to th two minutes to a half an hour, yeah. but you will get through it eventually, but it's a terrible feeling. Ever happened to you? Oh, it happens all the, <laughs> I, it still happens. I do endurance events, I do marathons, 50 yeah. mile races, 100 mile races, and sometimes it'll happen to you two to three times. Yeah during a race and you know you just have to believe that you're going to get through it. I ran five blocks covering a marathon at the halfway mile marker. Uh, Puffy Combs was running that <laughs> year and he came through. Well, I was running with a couple of people trying to get the interview. I had the microphone there and after five blocks I was like oh. <laughs> well, I, didn't, I hadn't run in a while and I had to run to keep up with these guys. I don't know if they were <laughs> trying to run faster because th there were a lot of cameras there or, or what. Um, but I saw him take something for endurance. Uh, nothing strange. I mean, okay. you know, it was like a, <laughs> uh, like a, a honey or something like that. In yeah. A packet. They have um, during races. It's hard to stomach solid food a, a lot of times. So they have this uh, very syrupy, liquidy fuel called yeah. gel. You know, and sometimes it's pure honey, and other times it's more of a you know process type. Yeah. It's basically sugar in a gel type, uh, a gel like form, and you basically suck them down. The packet's about this big, and they're about 100 calories each. Yeah. And it, you know, it goes directly to your bloodstream. It's a lot, and it, there's no digestion involved mm -hmm. like there would be if you ate a sandwich or a, or a Cliff Bar or yeah. something. And there are people who, who, who believe that this uh, helps to create longevity. Uh, Roscoe C. Brown and a lot of old runners who've been running for years. You hear the story about the 90-something-year-old woman <laughs> who, who's been running for a while. She, you know, praises this. This is something that you know you should do in order to uh, help along with the longevity. Yeah, and. It, all, longevity and also just feeling better every day, a healthier lifestyle. Yeah. I, I think that's more important, mm -hmm. feeling, feeling good when you wake up in the morning. And I think running really helps to yeah. uh, you know, enable everyday health. And that, yeah. that's kind of what we're trying to promote. We know the Bronx has a high rate of obesity. Yeah. And you know, when you run every day, you, know, you don't have to run a marathon, but you know, get up and do your 30 minutes or 20 minutes. You really do feel better every day. And hopefully, it'll enable you to be live a longer life as well. This we is can't exciting. guarantee it though. Yeah, we can't guarantee it. Nothing's <laughs> yeah. guaranteed. Though, yeah. But it helps. This is very exciting. I'm, I'm, you're, you're doing a great thing. You know, you're getting people together. You know, you, people want to sign up. Where can they sign up and uh, give us that information as to where it starts and everything again? Sure. The, the, we have a website called theholidaymarathons.com mm -hmm. and that'll link you to each of our major holiday races, whether that be Labor Day, which is coming up on Monday, um, Halloween, which is coming up in a little while. And you know, you just put your name in, your name and email address, and that's all we need to know. Yeah. And then you just show up. The, the start line is at the Tortoise and the Hare statue. It's a famous place, the famous starting line in Van Cortlandt Park. Van Cortlandt Park has a lot of history in running yeah, as yeah. well. You know, there's been cross-country meets and famous runners that go way back in Van Cortlandt Park. Yeah. But the start line, it's right off Broadway at 245th Street. Um, mm -hmm. And the, the start and finish is at the same location. Mm -hmm. And yeah, people just show up. And there's, there's no stress involved. The races start at 9 o'clock. Uh -huh. But people have been known to show up at 8 o'clock or late, and we welcome that, too. There's, yeah. no, there's no need to be there. There's at the a website. Time. Give us the website, Mike. Yeah, the, the, the holidaymarathons.com is, is the website to All link right. you to everything. Mike, very exciting. Good information, good sure. stuff. Mike Oliva, thank yeah. you so much. Thank Thanks you, Bob, for, for having us here me. On Open. Okay. Appreciate it. All right, uh, for more information on the race, please visit www.thelaborday.marathon. Is that? Um, yep. The Labor Day Marathon .com. Uh, We got to take a quick break, but up next, we'll be graced with the artistic royalty as painter Princess Dennis joins us. That's coming up right here on Channel 67's Open. Stay right there. Great. Recently off to this chest, and I rest again peacefully. peacefully. 
but at least have the decency in you to leave me alone when you freak see me out in the streets when I'm eating or feeding my dog.